So here's a quick rundown on the functionality of ZCNC, the unofficial ZBrush plugin version 1.0. So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up and I have the ZCNC plugin loaded in. And if you hover over the title here, you can see which version you currently have installed. So this version right now is 1.0. So the ZCNC plugin has a bunch of processes to help you create models for CNC milling. So the first thing we have here is the ability to set a specific material size. So if you have a piece of lumber or anything else you want to carve into, you can come through and set the length, width, height, and cut depth for that, and it's going to generate that tool inside of ZBrush for you. So I currently have some of these values set. So I have 24 inches in length, 7.25 inches in width, and 0.75 inches in height. Now if you want to change any of these values, you can just scroll the slider here, or you can type in a value and then press Enter to lock that value in as well. You can also set the alignment. By default, this is just set to Y. Now, after you're happy with all this, just come down here and simply click Create CNC Base Mesh. So after you click this button, the plugin is going to go through and it's going to generate you a new tool that has some files here that directly correlate to the material size you had set. So if I come to this subtool palette here and just open this up, you're going to see that the process here creates four subtools. So the first subtool here is just a placeholder. It's going to help you hold the scale of the model. And it also gives you a title here that has the material dimensions. So if you need to refer back to it and you can't remember what material dimensions you had typed in, it's going to be stored in the name of this subtool. Directly below this, we have a placeholder that's labeled placeholder do not modify. Do not make any changes to this mesh here. It's used in some of the processes that I'm going to show you here in a second. So just leave it alone and keep it as the second subtool. Now directly below that we have the material, so this is the one you can sculpt on, and below that we have the max cut depth. So this max cut depth is really handy to have visible while you're sculpting on your main model. So if I come through and start sculpting like so, you'll see if I go too deep into that material, it's going to expose that max cut depth. So this allows you to come through and sculpt on this surface here, and use any of the processes inside of ZBrush, and if you go too far, you're going to get a visual notification of that, so you can come through and fix that area. Now the material that is created as well is entirely quadded, so it has a perfect quadding across the entire surface there. This is going to allow you to get really clean sculpting results or masking when you use this tool to start generating meshes and models for CNC. So let's go back up to the top here. I'm just going to run through one of the quick processes you can do with this plugin. So if I open up the more options area here, we have some different buttons in here. So we have an auto subdivide mesh option. So when I clicked this create CNC base mesh, it created a base mesh for this and then subdivided it up to around a million polygons. So leaving this on is going to give you a surface that's correctly sized and also ready to be sculpted on. We have a CNC standard brush button here, and this will come through and change your standard brush to be ready for sculpting on your mesh. So it's gonna turn off some back face masking and some other options, so you can just go right in and sculpting. So I'm gonna enable that on. Below this we have load example alpha, and this is going to load in a predetermined alpha that I created with the nano tiles plugin. And this is just going to load that in, and it's also going to set some tiling values, so you can just turn this on as well. And then below this we have the CNC masking brush option here. And this is going to do the same thing it was doing with the standard brush, but with your masking brush. So it's going to disable back face masking on the default masking brush. So I'm just going to turn all these on here and then I'm just gonna click Create CNC Base Mesh again. So you can see now I have a, another tool created here, so identical to the first one, except you can see over here that the standard brush has been selected. I have the drag rectangle stroke selected, and I have an alpha that's been loaded in, and it also has tiling. So if you come up to the alpha menu up here, you go to Modify, you can see it also has tiling applied. Now this brush also has the lazy mouse turned off, so it's 100% ready to go to start sculpting with alphas on a material here. So I'm just going to position my model like so, and I'm just going to click in the center here and drag out. And you can see it's going to drag that tiling alpha out all the way like so, and I'm just going to position it so it fills the entire shape like that, and then release. So since this mesh was entirely quadded out, you can see I get the same resolution across the entire model there, and you can also see that it has filled the entire material space there. Now if I rotate to the side, you'll see that so since I was using this alpha to produce the effect, you can see it has expanded a little bit higher than the material. So if I go back to my subtool palette here and I turn on this placeholder one, you can see that the placeholder material stops here, but the sculpting I did on the material has gone past that. So if we tried to mill this now, it's going to mill into our board 
and go through that max depth. So we don't want that. So if I go back to the material there and just turn off that placeholder, if I go back to the ZCNC plugin here, directly below the Create CNC Base Mesh, we have a button that's called Resize CNC Base Mesh. So this is going to look at that second subtool, the placeholder that you're not supposed to modify, and it's going to resize the current subtool you have selected so that it fits inside of that original material. So if I just run this quick, it's going to resize that subtool I had selected. And you can see now it's changed my shape here. So it's taken all those Escher lizards there and it's flattened it down. And now if I turn back on that placeholder, you can see those Escher lizards there fit exactly into my material. So that process of coming through and resizing the CNC base mesh is going to allow you to sculpt with alphas. And if they go past the material, you can quickly just come through and resize it so it fits back to normal. So now that I have this done, it can now just be exported out to be CNC'd. So I currently have uh, access to the Vetric VCarbs application, and so that's what I primarily use for CNCing. So this tool will create two files, so you can export out to an inch format or you can export out to a millimeter format for use in Vetric. So I'm just going to run through the process of now exporting this out and then loading Vetric and loading this in and just showing you how to go through the process start to finish. And then we'll come back to some different options that are inside of this plugin. So to export this out, I'm just going to cover here. And I know that my VCarve application is set up currently in inches. So I'm just going to cover here and click Export to Vetric Inches. So when you click this, it's going to open up a new window like so. And here we can just specify names. So I'm just going to do Escher here. And then just hit Enter. And now it has exported out the subtool I had selected in inch format for use in Vetric. So now I'm going to launch Vetric VCarve. And so once this loads up, you're going to get something like this. So this is VCarve Desktop is what I have here. I'm going to come to the File menu up here and just go to New on that. It's just going to open up a new file for Vetric VCarve here. Now I have my dimensions set here already corresponding to the material that I set up inside of ZBrush. So 7.25 in the width, 24 in the height, and then a thickness of 0.75. Down here I have the appearance set to oak, you can change this to whatever you want, and I just have my modeling resolution set to fastest at the moment. So I'm just going to hit OK on that, and now I have my scene prepped for carving. And now I just need to import in that model that I exported out as ZBrush. So I'm going to come up to the file menu up here, I'm going to go to import, and I'm going to choose import component 3D model, and just click on that. And then I'm going to select the file I exported here, just double click that, and this is now going to load in. Now this file had around 1.3 million polygons, so depending on how dense your model is, it could take a little while to load into vCarve here. After this is loaded in, you should get something like this. We want to come over here to this Orient 3D Model tab here. And down here at the zero plane position for the model here, we want to make sure we have bottom selected. And then we're just going to click OK. And now we should get a preview of our tool here inside of vCarve. So you can see this is what our tool should look like inside here. So it's perfectly fitting to that material. And we have all our sculptural detail that we created inside of ZBrush. So I'm going to come over to the tool paths option over here. I'm just going to lock this so it stays over here. And I just want to come through and generate a rough and finishing path. So I'm going to click on the rough path here. I'm going to select a tool quick. So I have quite a few tools loaded in. These are all based around Amana bits. So here I have a rough one that has a 1 4th inch uh, straight angle ball nose. So I'm just going to select that one and hit OK. And then I'm just going to come through here and click Calculate. And that's going to calculate that path. And you're going to get a little preview option like so. You can come through and you can preview this tool path now. So if I click Preview, it's going to come through and show you what this would look like being carved out on your CNC machine. So you can see it's come through and applied a rough cut across the entire surface, exposing some of those lizards. So now that I have my rough toolpath done, I can close this and go now and select the 3D finishing toolpath, open that up, select the tool I want to use for that. So I have a 1 8 inch tapered angle ball nose uh, bit here. I'm just going to select that one and hit OK, and then click Calculate. It's going to calculate that toolpath across the model here. Then when that's completed, I can reset my preview and I can do a preview all tool paths. So it's going to go through and do the rough and then come through and do the finishing one. And this is the result I should get out of this mesh in wood on my CNC machine. 
Now I can close this and I can see how long this is going to take. So I can do a summary of all toolpaths here. So it's going to take a little while for this one with the settings I have selected. So I could go back and change these if I wanted to. And then I, from here, I can just export out these toolpaths. So I can just click Save Toolpath here. And then I can save these out to whatever post processor my CNC machine has. So I currently have an XCarve. So I just would export out the roughing and finishing passes here and then save those out. And then I can now CNC mill these on my CNC machine. So that is the rundown of using the ZCNC plugin with Vetric VCarve. So now I'm gonna go back to ZBrush now. So I'm just gonna close this. And back in ZBrush, I'm just gonna make a new scene. So I'm gonna disable some of these options over here. And I'm gonna keep the same length, width, and height, and then just do create CNC base mesh. So here we have our new scene here. I'm just gonna to switch to the clay buildup brush here as well. And since I had that tiling alpha on for the lizards, I need to go disable that quick. So I'm gonna go to the alpha menu up here and turn tiles off. So turn H tiles and V tiles down to one. And now I just have my clay buildup brush. So if underneath the Create CNC Base Mesh and the Resize CNC Base Mesh, you have a button called Additional Processes. Now, one of these options in here is Masking to Geometry. So this option is going to allow you to use that cut depth plane and masking to start generating different effects for CNC. So creating a mesh positively rather than creating it negatively. So I'm gonna come do my subtool palette here. I'm just gonna select that max cut depth subtool and I'm gonna turn off my material. So just hide it with that visibility icon there. And now I'm gonna come across this surface and with my masking brush, I'm just gonna change my brush size down here to a little smaller. I'm just gonna hold down control and I'm just gonna start masking on the model like so. And then you can hold alt to unmask. So I'm just gonna come and make a quick shape Maybe a little bit detailed in here, just something really rough for this demo. Now, after you have this masked, you can mask anywhere on your surface of your model here if you like. You just come to this button and you click Masking to Geometry, and it's going to take that masking and it's going to generate a new subtool based on that masking at a certain thickness. So here we have the thickness set to 0.25 inches. So it took that masking, gave me a new subtool at that 0.25 inches. So let's say I want to come through and mask out something else on the surface here. And now I want this to be 0.75 inches. I can come over here and type 0.75, hit enter, and then click masking the geometry. It's going to take that masking and generate a new subtool at that specific size. So this is very handy for coming through and generating quick shapes to start sculpting from. Now you have some other options with this. You have the ability to switch to the subtool automatically that's created. So if I come through and mask out another shape here, it's so really quickly, and then I click on the switch to subtool, click the button now. It's going to generate that subtool and then switch to it, which allows me to get right in there and start sculpting on it immediately. There's also another option that will later Z remesh the new subtool that's created. This will give you an extremely even topology, but it will take a little bit longer. So by default, these settings are set to off. But this will allow you to come through and start using masking to generate different effects. Now this geometry on this uh, cut depth plugin here is divided up some, but if you need increased resolution on your masking, just keep dividing it until you get enough points that will hold that masking detail you want to achieve. So that is the process of using the masking to geometry. Now let's say you go through and you use this entire process to generate multiple subtools, but now as you can see, these subtools are expanding past that material. So if I turn on this don't modify one again, you can see that these subtools are extending out of that material. So we can use that resize option again. So I'm just gonna make sure I have one of these extracted guys selected. I'm just gonna merge all the extracted together. So with one selected, I'm gonna go to the merge option here, do merge down. I'm just gonna do always okay on that and just merge all those together. So now I have one subtool of all those extracted parts. Now I can go back up to the ZCNC plugin here. I can go to this resize CNC base mesh, I'm going to take the subtool I've selected and resize it so it fits inside my material. So I come back up here, click Resize CNC Base Mesh. It's gonna process that one, and now it's going to fit inside my material. So if I turn on my material here, you can see the processes we just created fits exactly in that material. So that is the quick rundown on the ZCNC, unofficial ZBrush plugin, version 1.0. If you run into any bugs or issues, just let me know, and I'll attempt to fix them. 
So I hope that helps, and I look forward to seeing what you guys create with this plugin. Thanks for watching.